All right, guys, so what I'm gonna do for you now is I'm going to do the urea experiment. Um, uh, I encourage you to follow along, so get your lab out and sort of follow along with what I'm doing so that you can make your observations um, in the lab itself. And uh, we'll see how this goes. I'm gonna start on page two of seven and just follow the directions and you can follow along with me. All right, so it says to plug in the data logger into an outlet, collect the, connect the temperature probe and press home. And so I've got that all set up here. Then it says obtain a coffee cup calorimeter, stir bar in between one and five grams of urea and a weigh boat. So here I have got the calorimeter. Here I've got my stir bar. And I'm gonna measure out some urea and uh, go from there. Okay, so here on the balance, I have uh, my plastic weigh boat. I'm gonna hit the tear button and I'm gonna weigh out between one and five grams of urea. Make sure you write down how much I end up getting and weighing out. That's how much urea I have in the weigh boat right now. Next thing it's gonna tell me to do is to measure out 50 milliliters of water in a graduated cylinder. Here you guys can see what I'm doing. Here's my grad cylinder and I'm measuring out 50 milliliters of water. There we go. Let me show you my beautiful meniscus. Meniscus is just touching the line. Then it's gonna say next to measure the weight of that, determine how much this water weighs. I'm gonna put my calorimeter on the balance. I'm gonna tear it. And now I'm going to add the 50 milliliters of water into the calorimeter. And that's how much my 50 milliliters of water weighs. All right. Now, I'm gonna put my calorimeter back onto my stir plate. And uh, in goes the stir bar. I'm gonna put my lid on and I'm gonna put my temperature probe into the calorimeter and I'm gonna start stirring here. And I'm gonna monitor the temperature on the data logger. So this is gonna be a little bit stressful for me to get this ready, but I'm monitoring the temperature of the water on the data logger. Let me block the light that way. And it says to ensure the temperature is stabilized before we add the urea. So as you can see, pretty sure we are stabilized right now at 21.1 degrees Celsius. Now I'm gonna add the urea to the calorimeter quickly in all one pour, replace the lid and watch the temperature change on the data logger. All right, we'll see how this goes. I'm gonna put you back in here so you can see. I've got all of my urea here in my weigh boat. Open the lid, quickly add it in, close it up. Watch the temperature change on the data logger. Then it says, when the temperature stops changing, record the TF on your data sheet. I think we're good here. I would say at about 16.4, 16.5. Let's split the difference and say 16.45. All right, I'm gonna do trial two for you. So again, for trial two, what we're gonna do, we're gonna weigh out a certain amount of urea between one and five grams. 
Here I've got this on the scale. I'm gonna tear it. Got my urea here. Too much. Enough. There's the second mass of urea. There's my calorimeter on the balance. Scale, press tear. Add 50 milliliters of water. That's my 50 milliliters of water. Put my water on my uh, stir plate, add the stir bar. Put the lid on with the temperature probe. Wait for the temperature on the data logger to um, stabilize. Twenty one point three. Very quickly, all in one pour. Dump in the urea, close it up, monitor the temperature change. Looks like we're stabilized. The temperature has stopped stable has stopped changing. 17.3. And here is our final trial, trial three. So weigh about between one and five grams of urea. little over. Good enough. There's the amount of urea. Put that to the side. Calorimeter. Hit tear. Add 50 milliliters of water. Record the weight. Water on stir plate, stir bar in. Cover it with temperature probe. Monitor the temperature to until it's stabilized. All in one foul swoop, add the urea, close it up, monitor the temperature. Wait for it to stop changing. 16.2. All right, I'm gonna do this last part of the video here for you or the experiment where we determine the KEQ, creating a saturated solution of urea. I'm only gonna do this part once. You're gonna see it's, it's a really kind of obnoxious thing to do in the lab. Usually when I make you guys do it in the lab as well, I only give it to you one time to do. So first, carefully measure out two milliliters of DI water into a grad cylinder. All 
right here is my two milliliters of water in a small grad cylinder. And then I'm gonna measure the mass of the water in the cylinder and record it on the data sheet. So here is my balance behind. I'm gonna put that on there. Here is, uh, I'm gonna write this down too for my benefit. I'm oh, sorry about all the light, there we go. There is the mass of the grad cylinder and the two milliliters of water, 25.243. I'm gonna write that down real quick too. Now I'm going to weigh out about 1.95 grams of urea and add it to the graduated cylinder. Uh, here we go. There's the amount, 1.93 grams of urea. And I'm going to add it into the grad cylinder. Oh, gee, there we go. Okay, next direction says, stir the solution well with a temperature probe of the data logger and it should all dissolve. So here's my temperature probe connected to the data logger. I'm gonna do my best to push down all of this urea out of the base for you for a second so you can see and the urea is starting to dissolve now here's the problem we need to keep this at uh, as close to 25 degrees celsius as possible now from the last part of the experiment you should understand what's going on right now and that that's the temperature on the data logger right now so what i've got to do is try my best to keep this at 25 degrees Celsius. So I've got um, warm hands here. So I'm just pushing all the urea down. I can't add more water to push it down. We have to only use the two milliliters of water that was already measured out. And I'm stirring this, stirring this, stirring this. Stirring this, stirring this, stirring this in order to get it to dissolve. I'm gonna kind of move it sideways here and get the urea down off the sides while keeping an eye on the temperature probe and the data logger to keep this at 25 degrees. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get all of this dissolved and then I'll come back again. All right, that's um, been a solid couple of minutes there that I spent um, uh, making sure that this stayed at 25 degrees as well as you can see the bottom completely dissolved. And now what it says next is to take a spatula and add a few crystals of urea at a time. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna add about a scoop like this. Uh, there we go. I'm gonna add about a scoop like this at a time. Keep an eye on the temperature. Keep an eye on how it's dissolving and keep adding until we have created a saturated solution of the urea. The saturated solution means that you can't add any more. If you add any more, it won't completely dissolve. So I'm gonna take this. You can see it's down at the bottom. I'm gonna watch my temperature on the data logger. I'm gonna continuously stir until I can not get any more urea to dissolve at all. And I'm gonna do this. You can see it's starting to sort of dissolve. That scoop that I put in was clearly not the saturation point because most of it has dissolved. I'm gonna take this and try to get all my solid down off the sides. I'm gonna keep adding crystals like that until I just get it to dissolve. No more solid can go in at all. I'll come back to you when I have a fully saturated solution of urea. Guys, I ran into just a few technical difficulties in finishing up this last part of the experiment and then I forgot to take a video of everything when I was done. So I'm just gonna come over here and show you what the data is for trial one. We're not going to do trial two, just the trial one data. So the mass of water and cylinder before, that was at 25.243. After I added all of their urea that could possibly dissolve and kept the temperature at 25 degrees Celsius, it weighed 28.683. And then I took a final reading of the amount of solution in the graduated cylinder. Remember we started with two milliliters of water but the solution increased in size as we were adding the urea. So at the end, I really looked at the um, milliliter reading on the graduated cylinder and it read 4.12 milliliters. 
That's all of the information that you need in order to determine uh, the KEQ of uh, the saturated solution of urea. All right, guys, so here's just the final part on what you can finish up here. Um, here is the calculations page of your lab. You can absolutely complete all trial one, two, and three for the determination of the delta H. Make sure you do show your work for at least one of the trials. Here is going to ask you to calculate the average delta H for the dissolution. Pay attention to the signs. Then down here it says look up the accepted delta H of formation values for solid urea and for aqueous urea and calculate the uh, accepted delta H for the dissolution. So delta H of formation, so the delta H for the reaction is delta H of formation of the products minus the delta H of formation of the reactants, products minus reactants, watch your signs, and it says to uh, cite your source. So here I've got my beautiful CRC. I'm not actually gonna make you cite the source because that's a pain. Here you can see I've got urea. C stands for crystalline, so that's the solid. AQ stands for aqueous. Here are the delta H of formations. They are in terms of kilocalories per mole. Make sure you convert that into joules or kilojoules per mole. That's what I care about and that's what your answer is gonna be in. And there's your conversion factor, that one calorie is equal to 4.184 joules. So again, here's urea. C stands for crystalline, which is the solid. There's the delta H of formation of solid urea in kilocalories per mole. There's the delta H of formation for aqueous urea in terms of kilocalories per mole. One calorie is 4.184 joules. Here's the next page. Remember, you can do all of the information for trial one. We did not do a trial two. It's going to ask you to calculate the delta G, watch your signs, and it's going to ask you to do an average. Obviously, you don't do an average because we only did one trial. Here I've given you the accepted value of the delta G, so compare what we got, what I did for you guys, to the um, accepted. I did not get 8%. This is when I did the lab a long time ago. Uh, don't worry about errors larger than 10%. Obviously, I just did it for you here. And then speculate to any sources of error. And last but not least, using your, this is a post lab, using delta H that you calculated and your average, the delta G, determine delta S. Look up the accepted values for the entropy of formation of urea and urea aqueous and calculate the accepted delta S for that reaction. So again, here is our beautiful CRC. This last column here is entropy of formation, entropy of formation in calories per mole Kelvin. Again, there's the conversion when calories 4.184. So again, here we go. Here's urea, this top number is solid. Come over here to our last column. The, the entropy of formation of solid urea is 25 calories per mole Kelvin. Aqueous, 41.55 calories per mole Kelvin. Make sure you convert that into joules. And remember the delta S of the reaction, products minus reactants. All right, with all of that, you can absolutely complete the rest of the post lab. And there you go. All right, I hope that you enjoyed this video lab. I did the best I could to give you all of the information that you needed in order to complete it. If you have any questions or concerns, absolutely let me know and I'll do the best I can um, during this uh, challenging time of remote teaching. Thanks a lot, bye.